Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another quick pick prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the middleweight bout on Dana White's contender series between Cesar Almeida versus Lucas Fernando. So Cesar Almeida versus Lucas Fernando, how I feel about this one right here, is I'm going average confidence um, Lucas Fernando to beat Cesar Almeida. Confidence could be higher, could be lower, but ultimately, you know, the things that matter, I guess. Even though um, Lucas Fernando, I'm, yeah, I'm, I say Lucas Fernando, right? Average confidence, Lucas Fernando to beat Cesar Almeida. But um, things that stick out, um, Lucas Fernando is more of a striker than he is a grappler, so this could easily end up being a striking matchup, which isn't the best thing because you're going with a guy who is a world-class kickboxer and Cesar Almeida. So you kind of more like an MMA striker, kind of more so. And this guy's kind of more of a purist striker. You know, he, you know, competed at a high level. As we went over Alex Pereira, you know, he's one and two against Alex Pereira. Kind of the same record Alex Asanya has. Actually, Alex Asanya is one and three. But anyway, yeah, kind of similar record. But and also that was back in 2013 when he did have, you know, those fights. It's not like he had him when he was the glory champion. I think they fought now or even when Alex Pereira was champion, Alex Pereira was stopping pretty easily. I think Alex Pereira got a lot better. I don't feel like this guy got much better since since then. And, um, yeah, but what I would say now, yeah, the, interesting, the part that makes this kind of a little bit difficult is the fact that Lucas Fernando is more of a striker than a grappler, and he's going to a world-class striker. That's what makes it a more difficult pick, as opposed to if he was like a world round fighter who, you know, maybe had stronger jiu-jitsu than he did, or maybe it was more even, or maybe it was more part of his game. It'd be like, yeah, that's an easy pick. But the fact that it isn't, it doesn't make it a little bit hard. But ultimately, the good sign, and also why I'm leaning to him, while, you know, that made it a little bit difficult or maybe a little bit tougher to lean to him, what makes it easier to lean to him for me in the fact, I feel actually, I feel he's the better striker in my opinion. I don't know about kickboxing striking, but as far as, I mean, I feel like he could beat him in a kickboxing match too, but would I pick him in that? Probably, you know, would I be jumping on it to predict him in that? No, but I think he's the more crafty striker. I think he's the more dangerous striker. I think he's the more active striker. I feel like, um, what's his name? I feel like Cesar Almeida is pretty basic with his strike. I don't really see nothing phenomenal about him. And another thing I would say, I feel. Striker doesn't translate the same everywhere. Like a guy in May, he kind of be a little bit mediocre, but he might transition better over to, you know, K1 glory style kickboxing. Or a guy might be phenomenal in Muay Thai, but then they come up in May, they be trash. Like it don't always translate as good as you think it should. And hey, like I said, Lucas Fernando, I might say he might, I actually, I might feel like I like his striking better than I like um, Cesar Almeida. It catches my eyes more. I feel like it's more dangerous, more effective and whatnot than um, Cesar Almeida. But his might not trans transition over to Kibba as much as easily. Or obviously, that guy, that's his, his bread and butter. But, yeah. But to get to the point and to make it quick, I just feel like all I really see from, is, uh, from um, Cesar Almeida, you know, he kind of stalks his opponent a little bit. Throws a couple combinations. Nothing, nothing too crazy. All, all pretty basic, pretty standard stuff. But a lot of guys can, you know, do well or stick around at a high level because, you know, they well conditioned, they're pretty durable, and they can stay in your face. And they can kind of, you know, break it down. But, and that could be good for a kickboxing. But in May, if all you're doing is kind of trying to stalk opponent, you're not really doing a real big critical damage, or your takedown defense isn't there, you know, a lot of different variables that isn't there, you know, in MMA, then you're not really making the time you do have to stand on your feet is effective. So you come in and try to stalk opponent, they just let you stalk them, they just take you down. And yeah, a lot to say, a lot of nothing, but I need to probably a longer video or need to be better at explaining what I'm trying to explain. But yeah, I just feel like he's not as effective with what he does. It's kind of more like a stalky type thing. And I feel like um, when I look at Lucas um, Fernando, I feel he's more in you. I know um, says that I might have once in you, but I feel like he's kind of more like a, that slow breakdown. And I feel um, says that I made it, not say it, but I feel like Lucas Fernando, he's more crafty with his knees. He can get them up pretty high. He has like some real crafty combinations. He's very tricky on feet. Then on top of that, he's been more active. He's for better competition. Wasn't they might be a world class kickboxer, but he's only three and zero in MMA. And the last guy he fought was like five and forty eight. And then he has fought in two years since. And now the guy at least has a more fleshed out game. Now I think he, at the very least he can hold his own on the feet if needed. And he can mix in the grappling, and, and you know that'd be the big difference. But I actually think he's gonna stop him on the feet. I just feel like he's a more dangerous striker. He's more active striker. He's more crafty, and he's. He's been um, 
oiling the wheel. Like he's been active, whereas his other opponent has been inactive. With other guy, Cesar Almeida has been active. So I think he's going to steam, uh, not steamroll, but I think he's going to wear him down. You know, I think he's going to be able to land heavy shots. And I think he's going to be a surprise. I think other guy will expect him to grapple more. But then we start kind of getting behind the wheel. He's going to kind of be a little bit frustrated by the fact that he's not having the success he was on the feet. His opponent's quicker, younger, and sharper than him. And I think he's not going to be the rally. I think he's going to try to, like, get a little bit out of his game and get a little bit sloppy, leave himself open. And then I think he's going to start to break him down with his knees and bring the shots over the top, you know, get him hurt, lean him back, bounce off the cage, hit him with Stephanie, knee, probably going to catch him to, like, to the chest and the chin, curl him over, and hit him with some follow-up ground and pound and stop him in the second round. So in this one, I have Lucas Fernando via second-round TKO.